not really grateful. Not really grateful for the life that they've given us by every breath that we take. Uh, we truly give thanks and we know where who sustains us and where we get our breath from. We pray that as we're about to start with the song service, I pray, Lord, that you will be with us as we lift up our voices to sing songs of praise. And I pray for Elder Mackenzie. I pray that you be with him, anoint his brain cells, so that um, the Holy Spirit can continue to use him in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother JB, for that wonderful prayer. Um, we'll um, now begin with a psalm, hymn number one, Pray to the Lord, over to you, Sister Sitelli. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. All oh, my soul, praise him, for he is the health and salvation. Only who hears now to his temple draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who over all things so wondrously reigneth. Shieldeth ye under his wings, ye so gently sustain him. Hast thou not seen how thy desires there has been granted in what he ordained? Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy be daily attend thee. Ponder on you what the Almighty can do. If with his love he be friendly. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Sister um Sitelli. Um such a beautiful song. Thank you for singing as well. It's um there's so much to praise God for. We could sing this song all day. Amen and amen. And we'll welcome all and um, welcome Elder Mackenzie. Um, we have the wonderful Elder Mackenzie breaking bread with us today. And um, we know that you enjoy studying your Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And so we know that you'll have something wonderful to share with us. And so without further ado, over to you, Elder Mackenzie. Welcome. Thank you so very much indeed. And uh Thanks for the warm welcome, and it's good to be here. And, um, you know, strange thing is, I am never as ready, as prepared as I'd like to be. Uh, there's always these butterflies, uh, you know, um, troubling me. Um, but I also recognize that it is not me, it's not about me, it's about the Lord himself. It is his word um that uh uh is important and his holy spirit infusing and diffusing to us his his word and his will so i i take this as a very um a sacred um and uh, ominous honorous uh um, duty so i i thank you thank you for your prayer and um on just for being here. And I pray the little time that we have here together will uh, will cause us to reflect on um, what God has done for us and what he's doing for us and how much that he loves us with such a love, such a passion. Um, they, they say you must not jump to conclusions or conclusions will jump to you. 
that is a saying. It is also said, confession is good for the soul, but bad for the reputation. It's the, uh, those were the words I heard many years ago from the, the gentleman who has been chosen, elected at the, uh, the conference, North England conference session many years ago, he'd said this, and it has lived with me, uh, Steve Palmer. Um, Confession is good for the soul, even if it's bad for the, your, your reputation. My question is, have you been wrong about someone? Past judgment, misspoken, cause pain and distress without uh, a cause, really. Have you been wrong? And then when you've discovered that you've been wrong, uh, what do you do about it? I think all of us have found ourselves in, in this situation with past judgment. I remember some years ago when the trials of uh, um, O.J. Simpson came on and, you know, it was a, a media scrum. It was, it was much talked about, this trial. And I, I was furious with the man. You know, I think, why, why does he, why doesn't he just confess that he has done this heinous act? And I heard the case of the of the uh, the um, accused, the barrister for the um, uh, prosecuting prosecuting him, and I thought it's a done deal. And um, then I listened to defense to the defense lawyers, and then I started thinking, wow, if I had my way, before hearing what the defense people had to say, I would send this man straight down. But, you know, they are paid to, to defend and the other is paid to prosecute. That's their job. But deep down, I also think that, um, as I observe from time to time, when there's a trial, very, very few people ever confess to being wrong, having done it. I, I'd gone to into um, I say quietly, um, you know, into some institution some years back, and there was one fellow there. They call him Einstein. They didn't call him Einstein because he looked like Einstein. He was a black fellow, and um, his mantra was, "I never done it. I never done it. It weren't me." And he carried on, and of course, one thinks, yes, of course, they all say that, don't they? They all say that. But he was, it, it, it was a mantra of his, it just went on. It weren't me, I never done it. And he was languishing there in prison for a long time. He had been there. And then one evening, I just so happened to put the television on there was nothing interesting, so I switched from one channel to another just to just to see something that would be interesting. Um, I know that many of us maybe don't subscribe to television, you know, but um, yes, but that is our choice, really. And I wouldn't say yay or nay; it is a personal personal choice. But there I was, and I switched over, and there was a program called Rough Justice. And it was this man's case that was being highlighted. And they showed you this crime that was committed in one part of London and how that this man who was called Einstein, not because he was bright, but because he wasn't, he was the opposite to Einstein. And this particular crime was such that it was a sophisticated uh, crime uh, robbery and there was no way that this man could have engineered such plots to 
to uh, have the outcome of robbing um, uh, so many, so much millions of, of pounds. So there he was. And when they showed you, I felt my, 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 if I had my way, I might have sent this man down because um, of what was was said because he was there and like most uh, prisoners, um, they would say, well, I never done it. It weren't me, judge. Um, but what when it is at sign, seal and delivered? What when it is a case that there's no room for error, no wriggle room? What happens then? And I must confess to you right now, it's a confession that I sat at this table, I made some notes, and for whatever reason, one page of my notes have gone missing. I don't know how that has happened because I'm right here and there's nobody else with me. So um, maybe the Lord doesn't want me to share it, share that with you. But uh, it, is, it is his business and I am just uh, his humble servant. So... Um, we think of various people in scripture who have, uh, have been found themselves on the wrong side of the law. We found a certain man named David. And before David, we have, we have, uh, we have others, we, we have Hannah. And if you remember Hannah, she found herself in the, in the house of the Lord. She was troubled because her husband had two wives. And one of these wives had children and who made fun of Hannah, because she was seen as barren. She had no children. It seemed like a, it was almost like a curse not to have children uh, in that era. Now, nowadays, and for going back, people, people choose not to have, uh, women choose not to, not to become mothers, not to have to bear children. But as for Hannah, she wanted children. She wanted children so bad. And, but this child just did not come. And her husband encouraged her. In fact, he said such ridiculous things, you know, trying to find words of comfort. She said, am I not better for you? Am I not as good for you as 10 sons or seven sons or many sons? What more do you want? What's your what you're troubled? Why are you so fretful and complaining? You know, relax, take it easy. I am here for you. I love you as much as if you had had many, many sons. I could not love you anymore. If you produce, my love for you could not have been heightened or higher. But she was troubled. And you know, when you're troubled, when you have a, a case, when you are, you can't rest. They said, a little quip I saw on the wayside pulpit, he said, when you can't sleep, don't count sheep. Talk to, to the shepherd. Talk to the shepherd, not counting sheep. And that shepherd is Jesus Christ himself. And so Hannah found herself in the house of the Lord, that place of prayer. We are told if we have our complaints when that, temple was built uh, by, by Solomon and the opening and, and the prayer was, if you have anything, any problem, any complaint, this is the house of prayer. This is a place to come and pour your heart out, make your petition known to the Lord. And so Hannah went into the house of the Lord and she prayed. So let me just read for you a little bit here from verse eight of First uh, Samuel. Then said Elkanah, her husband, unto her, Hannah, why weep you? And why eat, no, eat you not? Why are you not eating? Why is your heart grieved? 
Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post at the temple of the Lord. And he was in, sorry, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your handmaid and remember me and, uh, and not forget your handmaid, but will give to your handmaid a child, a man child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, then Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart only. Her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunk. And Eli said to her, how long will you be drunken. Put away your wine from you. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have not drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not your handmaid for a daughter of Bela, for out of the abundance of my complaint have I and grief have I spoken hereto. Here then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have asked of him. And she said, Let your handmaid find grace in your sight. So the woman went her way and did eat and had and her countenance was no more sad you know eli was so wrong she was so very very wrong indeed and you know for some people they they, they would just want to knock lumps out of the out of the priest out of the pastor out of the brother or sister who was so wrong about them, who had jumped to conclusion, remembering that if you jump to conclusions, conclusions will jump to you. She was gracious. Only her lips moved, but her heart was shouting out to God. She was bent low. Eli had the good grace. He did not say, sorry, I have misjudged, but may you find grace. May the Lord answer your prayer, grant your, your request. And I'm just wondering how often people have been wrong about us and have come apologizing and then finding that the bitterness remains. Story is told of a, a lawyer and his neighbor, the doctor. And the doctor, sorry, the, the, the lawyer rang the doctor first at two o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. And he was in a shouting mode. He said, neighbor, doctor, I cannot sleep. Your dog is keeping me awake by barking. I'm barking. I need to sleep. I have worked in the morning. Please shut your dog up. But, uh, uh, and before the doctor could give an answer, the phone was slammed down at the other end. 2.30 the following morning, when most people are enjoying their sweetest sleep, the lawyer's phone rang. Who on earth could this be, went the lawyer? Who on earth could be ringing me at this hour of the night? Hello, 
it is your neighbor, the doctor. I just wanted to let you know, I would like you to know that I haven't got a dog. I, I've never owned a dog. My dog did not keep you awake. And it is now you tell it, but the phone went down at the other end. The doctor had his revenge, you might say. But the Bible tells us that we should leave revenge to the Lord. How about the woman, the church member who, I wouldn't say she was a busybody, but she was one for jumping to conclusions. And she saw a certain brother from the church and his truck was parked in the vicinity of the public house. Where all sorts of drinking and all kinds of things happened. And so she went to the church and she made a complaint about him that this man is a drunk, he's a reveler, he goes to these clubs and he, because his truck was seen outside if not in the pub car park, well, close, uh, in close proximity to that place. And despite the protestation, she maintained. And then some while later, uh, the brother, one evening, parked his truck outside the sister's house and went home. Nobody saw him go, but he, dis he went home, leaving his truck parked outside her house. Well, when people brought it to the attention of the church that brother so-and-so's truck was parked overnight at sister so-and-so's house, she got the message. She got the message. Well, how is it with us? How is it with us and God? Do we jump to conclusions? Do we pass judgment upon others? Not knowing the full story. Maybe you, you see somebody, a, a brother, a sister, going into the, into the, whether it be to the drugstore, to the chemist, whether it be to the supermarket, maybe on the Sabbath, it's Sabbath is not yet done. And you think, Wow, brother, so-and-so, sister, so-and-so is gone shopping on the Sabbath. And what you may not know is that maybe they are picking up a prescription for an elderly neighbor, a sick child. We have to be so careful that we do not jump to conclusions. We read the story of Hannah. One day, there was a knock at the door. Who could this be? It was Nathan, the priest. Nathan had gone to see David. We read that in 2 Samuel chapter 12, 1 to 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12. And he tells us there, and the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, there were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeded many flocks and herds, and the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meal, of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay his head, uh, sorry, lay in his bosom, and was to him as a daughter. And there came a traveler to the rich man, and he spared to take one of his own flock, of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it 
for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord lives, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he said, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and cause and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, you are that man. You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king and the rest. You know the story there. How that he had taken, uh, as Nathan would go on to explain, you had taken Uriah's wife and you had done this, this heinous act. And on he went, he outlaid, and David, I just imagine, his head must have, must have fallen. His eyes, I suppose, did not leave the ground because he knew he was that man. But notice about David, he did not try to find some wriggle room did not try to find some loophole to get out of this situation, this predicament. In fact, he confessed, guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. Oh, if only we had more like David. The Lord says of David, He's a man after my own heart. He's the kind of man I can do business with. He did not try to find a way out or to say, well, if she did not, you know, make herself so visible, having a bath, then I would not have done it. If she had gone and locked herself away, then this thing would not have happened. He did not try to find any way out. Held his hand up. Guilty as charged. I indeed am that man. And so we read in Psalm chapter 41, uh, sorry, 51. David, after, in fact, it says to the chief musician, a psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. If a thing gnawed away at his consciousness, Uriah, this righteous, this good man, this good soldier, even though David tried every which way to get him to go on to ingratiate himself, you know, with, with, uh, with, with, with Bathsheba, his wife. How can I do this when my fellow soldiers are back there facing the enemy? How can I? And however hard he tried, he, he just couldn't. And so in the end, you know, David wrote uh, his death warrant and said, give, it, give this to your captain. Not knowing that, you know, his life, his life would end thanks to David's bad behavior. It tells us something about, uh, about Uriah as well. He did not open that letter to read what was inside. You know, he was a good man. So David wrote, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my, my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that, you're, that you might uh, be justified when you speak and be clear when you judge. David poured out his heart before God. I have sinned. I am guilty, blot out my transgression, wash me with hyssop, make me clean, Lord. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O oh God. You God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing 
aloud of your righteousness. Oh, we need more like David. People who will not hide behind their wrongdoings, will not try to find loopholes, will not make excuses. I have sinned. More like Eli after being so wrong. You know, I know in the past I've gone on a little bit, maybe that's why a page of my of my uh what i've written down to share with you has disappeared mysteriously it's only a small area i'm in here but it's gone i cannot find it it's page three gone we read the story of a young man in luke chapter 20 uh, luke chapter 15. luke chapter 15. it's a well-known story of the young man who left home, who said to his father, disrespected his father, and went away with his the portion of that he felt was his entitlement. In fact, you only get a legacy after the death. He saw his father as already dead. He saw his brother as lacking ambition, who wanted to spend his life around this farm, shoveling farmyard manure, doing this and doing that. And, you know, when there are bright lights waiting for you out there, certainly not me, the younger brother said and felt and expressed to his father, give me the portion that is coming to me. I can't wait for you to die. You might be alive for a long time to come. He must have thought, just let me have it. I want it now. And maybe as a parent yourself, a child coming to you and said, mom, dad, you know, I want to have it now. I know you've made a will, which is a good thing to do for those of us here today. You know, and even when we make wills, and we are gone. I've seen where people, where siblings have torn one another limb from limb over some legacy, some dead left, as Jamaican people would say. And they come to you saying, give me my legacy now. Whatever it is you put in the will for me, I can't wait. Let me have it now. Maybe you'd send them packing, but not this father. He gave it to the boy and he went and he lived it up. He made friends. He was the one to, to stand all the bills with all these fancy women and all these cool looking guys. They were all over him. And then, little by little, the money went. And he found himself, as went the money, so went the friends, the fair weather friends, the users and abusers, the takers and the takers. And then when the boy looked around, there was nothing left. And all those designer clothes that he wore had all become shredded. And the boy who had not learned to darn and to sew, he was, he was in a disgraceful state. And he woke up, realizing he had to find a job, found one for a Jewish boy feeding pigs. And even envying the pigs, the, what they were eating. And then he... Bible says he came to himself, which means he was beside himself. He came to himself and he says, how many had servants of my father who are living a better life than this? I will go back to my father. I will go back. 
And I will say, Father, I have sinned. You know, it takes courage to recognize that you have. And not only that you have, that you've been wrong, but you're going to do something about it. You're going to retrace your steps. You're going to go back. And you know, many of us, we recognize that we are, we are wrong, we've been wrong, and we still hold our ground. No, I, 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 that's expression of weakness. I've got to be strong. We, we wrong one another along the way. Wives, husbands, children, brothers and sisters, both biological and spiritual. But that stubbornness, that heart, that stubborn heart is still there, but not this young man. And all the while he didn't know that his father was looking out for him. And so he picked himself up, trudging all along, father scanning the horizons to see his boy. And there was that familiar gait, that walk unmistakably so of his boy, that well-rehearsed speech. Father, I have sinned and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Father did not listen to the complete confession. He recognized that he had sinned, that he had made a mistake. It's good to have you back home, son. And he ordered his servants to go and and kill the fatted calf and find uh, that robe, that royal robe, and put that ring on his finger, that seal, so that the boy would be able to sign checks and to do all as he had done before, or even more than he had done before. But this, my son, he was dead. He's now alive again. He was lost. He's found. He's far away from home. Now he's come back home. You know, it's saying goes, there's nothing, nothing in all the world as precious to God as the tears of a repentant sinner. Nothing. You repent. Lord, forgive me. And the Lord is more ready to forgive us than we are prepared to ask for forgiveness. We're not going to say anything about the big brother. The big brother who was so angry that he would not come in. He shut himself out. There was no forgiveness in his heart. How long have I been with you and you have not even given me a lamb so I could celebrate with my friends? And he sat there sulking, his heart bitter. Hatred filled his heart for his brother and no doubt for his father. Soon as this, your son has come back home. Look what you've done for him, for your son, your blue-eyed boy. A son, but all that I have is yours. You, you, you. you would not hear of it. Hatred, malice, indifference destroys its host. Destroys the host. If you harbor these things, then they will destroy you ultimately. Not only now, driving a wedge between yourself, ourselves, and our peers, or loved ones, but will exclude us from glory. Two men went up to pray. They said one was a publican, the other was the Pharisee, the other was a, a sinner, seen as a sinner, the, the publican. Whereas one raised his hands up towards heaven and prayed, Lord, I'm glad I'm not like other men. He must be thinking like him, for example, over there. 
I give tithes of everything I own. I, 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 I pray. I, I fast so many times a day. I, I, you know, I, 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 I do this and I do that. And, and the other fellow, he did not look up to heaven. He did not raise his hands. He was there smoting himself on the breast. Lord, his head bowed. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. Be merciful unto me, a sinner. Lord, you know where I've been. He must have been thinking, you know what I've done. You know how far, how short I am from your expectations of me. You know the mistakes I've made along life's way. The people I may have hurt even without knowing it. Be merciful unto me, Lord, a sinner. And Jesus, having told that story, asked, which of these went down to his smoke house are justified? Self-justification is no recommendation. There was another man, I'm not going to keep you for long. Another man recognized that he had done wrong. In fact, two men recognized that they had done wrong. We, we, we can read about them in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 27, we read about this particular man. There was another man, or there is another man somewhere there or thereabouts. In fact, one of these men had said to Jesus, Lord, even if everybody else should forsake you, should go against you, I will be the last man standing. I will die for you, Lord. And that man, in fact, when they came to arrest Jesus, grabbed hold of a sword and he, he went for the guy's head. He went to split the man's head in two in defense of his master. I suppose the guy just turned his head a little bit and the sword took his ear off. Look at the kind of God that we serve, the kind of Jesus. He picked the man's ear up and put it back on, healed him there, then. And the Lord Jesus had told Peter, Peter, you say all these nice things. You say all these nice things. But I'm telling you that before the cock crows, you will have all already denied me three times. But Lord, no. he said, Peter, Satan desires to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. Satan wants to use you as a little ping pong ball, wants to use you as a shuttlecock, his little plaything, his puppet. Satan wants to be your puppeteer, pulling all his strings. But Peter, I have prayed for you. He tells us in another place in John chapter 17 that not only does he pray as he prayed for all those disciples there and then, but he has prayed for all those who would believe in him down through the millennia, down through the the centuries, he's prayed for you, he's prayed for me. But Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith will hold, that you fail not. And then when you are converted, Peter, strengthen the brethren. The day came when, of course, that night you remember how they followed him afar off. And of course, just like Jesus said, Peter denied his Lord, cursed and he swore and the clouds were blue about him from swearing. I'm telling you, I don't know the man. There was another man. We meet in chapter 27. And this man, He was, unlike Peter, you know, when he re recognized what he had done, his denial, 
Bible tells us that he wept bitterly. He was ashamed. He was embarrassed. He, he wept. But this man, it's one thing to recognize that you have sinned, that you've done wrong. What are you going to do about it? Verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders and the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to uh, Pontius Pilate, the governor, then Judas, then Judas, which had betrayed him. When he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. Hey, it's on the line in my Bible. Repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See you to it. That's your business, mate. You deal with the situation. It's not our concern, not our problem. That problem is yours and yours alone. And so he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Brothers and sisters, friends here today, we are told if we confess our sins, now let me let me take you there. John chapter, first John chapter one. First John chapter one. Uh, let me try and find that in my Bible here. First John chapter one. One John one. Nine to ten. Start before that. It says in verse six, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have no sin, we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And brothers, my sisters, dear friends, we, I encourage that we examine ourselves, that we see where we may have been wrong, where we have gone wrong, not may have been wrong, but where we have, because all of us have sinned. We have wronged one another. We stepped on each other's toes deliberately or, or accidentally. Let us confess our sins or false one to another, not our sins. We confess to God. Judas is a uh, mistake if you can call it that, was that he confessed to uh, those people. He did not confess to God. He did not seek forgiveness. And repentance is there. And we have all sinned and come short. We ought to be a bit more like David. We ought to be like that publican. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
one of those uh, those old Jim Reeves songs is, if I have wounded some poor soul today, if I have caused what anyone to go astray, if I have done things in my own way, then Lord, forgive. Forgive the sins I have confessed to you. Forgive the secret sins I, I may not see. Dear Lord, forgive. And so as I close, uh, I pray the Lord will answer our prayers. He longs to do that. Just remember, there's nothing more precious to God in all the world than the tears of a repentant sinner. Let us pray. Father, we are thankful to you for your blessings. We are thankful to you for the many examples in scripture to tell us that you are waiting to forgive us, to heal us of our brokenness, our broken relationships, that we ought to have no inhibition, Lord, in coming to you, in going to our brothers and sisters who we may have wronged, to say, I'm sorry, I've sinned, I've done you wrong. And I pray, Lord, that our hearts may bow even lower than our knees and that we may desire to walk in newness of life. Know that we, we are forgiven. Our past may be wretched, flawed, but our future is spotless. So hear my prayer, hear the prayers of your people here today. Because we pray in no other name than that of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you, sis. I return the platform to you. Are we there? Amen. Amen. What a powerful message. Amen and, and amen. Thank you so much, Elder Mackenzie. Powerful. Any questions, thoughts or comments for Elder Mackenzie, please? Please feel free to unmute. Yes, please, um, Sister Z. I just want to say thank you, Elder Mackenzie, for reminding us, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, in the time that we are in, uh, with all the events that are happening, that are clearly showing that Christ is almost at the door, um, that it is time for us to look at what we have done to examine ourselves and see that that what we have done that is wrong and seek forgiveness before we run out of time what a powerful message and what a timely message thank you very much thank you sis i'll be praised Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts or comments? Okay, and who'd like to close this section with a word of prayer, please? I will. Thank you. And also please pray for um, Elder Mackenzie and his and ministry and family as well, please. Thank you. Let us pray. To our kind and loving Father who art in heaven, thank you for the gift of life, allowing my brethren and I to come and sit at your feet and listen to your man's event. You speaking through him to give us the warning to awaken us from our slumber, reminding us that it is time to 
look at our hearts to see what is what is in our hearts and to change our ways in in order to prepare for to be prepared for the soon coming of our of our king and to prepare ourselves for to be suitable citizens of heaven thank you uh, for allowing us time to lay down our tools and walk away from the busyness of this life and to to spend time in your presence forgive my sins forgive the sins of those that are gathered here including that of the man saving elder mackenzie that you have used thank you for giving him inspiring him to share this message with us Thank you for um, <clears throat> his ministry and the lives that he is uh, touching by allowing you to use him as he stands in his lot. Please continue to use him in a mighty way and increase his, uh, grow his ministry. Bless him and bless his family. And thank you for allowing us be able to meet in the manner that we have met on the pr uh, prayer retreat platform. Lord, I also ask that you uh, increase the reach of this ministry. And thank you for all the heads that are bowed down here. And, and the message that we have heard, Lord, let us not hold it onto ourselves, but to use it so that others may know that you live. May we live according to that, says the Lord, and not uh, hear the word and allow it to just sit in the shelves of our hearts to gather dust. Thank you for your love that sends us all these truths and remind us uh, of the God that you are, the one who loves without him being given any reason. Thank you for just uh, so much love from you, Father. And we ask for the Holy Spirit to continue to speak with us, reminding us all these things that you have taught us, write them in, the, in our hearts, that when the time comes, the Holy Spirit may be able to remind us of what you have taught us. It's my prayer in the precious name of Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Vitali, for that wonderful prayer. Amen. Okay, and we'll now move on to um, our other short prayer. Um, who would like to do the prayer of praise today, please? Okay, I'll do that one. Okay, and who'd like to give the prayer of confession? Confession of sin. I will. <clears throat> oh, lovely. Thank you, Sister Ingrid. And the verse I have to use. Um, I'm from... not at home. <laughs> I'm not at home. I haven't got my Bible. Should I read it out? Please. On your behalf? Or... Yeah, yes. Okay, I'll do that. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, and who would like to do the prayer for the Holy Spirit, please? I will. If you can put the Thank verse you. in the chat, I'll be able to read it. Put the whole verse or just the just the, the, just the, verse, the, the just the um reference. Uh, if you can manage to put the whole verse, like I can read it. Oh. oh. But if you cannot, you it's okay. Today. Oh, it's okay. You can okay. read it for me then. I'll read it. Yeah, sorry. Just because I've got a new device today. So, okay. Thank you, um, Sister Sarah. Sister Z, Sister Z, sorry to inter yeah. interrupt. Yeah. If you give me Sister Sarah's voice, I can put it in the chat. 
I hope she'll be able oh, to Oh, thank you, Sister Kitelli. So the verse for Sister Sarah is Luke 9. And, hold on. Sorry, Luke 11. 9 to 13, I think. Yeah, Luke 11, 9 to 13, B. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you, Sister Fitelli. Okay. And last but not least, who'd like to do the prayer for prayer retreat, please? And also, and also, sorry, evangelism. I'll do it, Sister Z. I'm just copying this verse for Sister Sarah. Oh, thank you, Sister Sitelli. The verse I have for you is Matthew 24 and verse 14. Thank you. Thank you. That's Matthew 24. And verse 14, please. Thank you so much. Thank God bless you. you. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, the order of prayer will be um, me first, giving the prayer of praise. Number two will be Sister Ingrid, um, giving the prayer for confession. Number three will be Sister Sarah, um, given the prayer for the Holy Spirit. And last but not least, um, will be Sister Sitali, um, given the prayer for prayer retreat and evangelism. Okay, so just take a moment um, to have silent prayer, asking God to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, please. And then we'll pray in, in, in that order. Let us pray. Amen. Let us pray. Dear kind and loving God, thank you for all that you do. And we thank you, dear Lord, that um, you've brought us past midday. We thank you um, that we're in our right minds. We thank you that we can come and kneel down and pray to you at any time of the day. Um, and you are always there to hear us, to help us, to support us, to protect us, to guide us. Um, to lead us. You're so amazing, dear Lord. We thank you for being so kind, gentle, warm, and loving. We thank you, dear Lord, for this um, prayer retreat platform. Um, we thank you for um, allow, for uh, leading the leaders um, with what they should do, giving them a double filling of the Holy Spirit and leading us um, with what we should hear. And we thank you for also um, allowing the evangelists to be Holy Spirit led as well. We have been truly blessed. So we give you all the thanks and we give you all the praise. You're a mighty, wonderful God. We thank you also for Elder Mackenzie's talk of us today, um, reminding us that we must um, confess our sins, dear Lord. Um, we must you know, own up to where we've gone wrong. And we pray, dear Lord, that we can meditate on these words, apply them to our lives um, and in our prayers to you, and then also to share the message with others as well. Thank you, dear Lord, for all that you do. As it says in Psalm 71, verses 5 to 8, it says, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be 
filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day long. Dear Lord, we could praise you forever because you were so amazing and you're so awesome. And also your loving kindness is better than life itself. We thank you, dear Lord, that we can come to you as our refuge. As, as we can come to you and you are our refuge, I should say. Um, at any time, we thank you, dear Lord, for being so magnificent and wonderful, kind and loving. We thank you and we praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you do. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The verse for confession of sin is one that Elder Robert, Elder Mackenzie read earlier to, to us today. It's coming from Psalm 51, Psalm 51, verses 1 to 10, and it says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in my sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Gracious Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. We thank you, dear Father, for this time to come apart, to hear your word, and to come together in prayer. Father, we realise that you are a pure, holy, righteous, um, marvellous God, yet you are our Heavenly Father, and you have promised to forgive our sins where we come to confess them. We realise, Lord, we're sinners, and we're asking you to wipe the slate clean of all the things uh, that are in our lives that are unlovely and unlike Jesus. Father, we uh, pray that you would uh, cleanse us from uh, breaking uh, your law. Uh, we ask that you would uh, give us a new heart and a new mind uh, that we might uh, be in a right relationship with you. We're asking you to fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we're empowered to overcome the temptations that beset us uh, and to help us to overcome the sin in our lives. Uh, dear Father, we ask that you will help us to have uh, loving, caring and kind relationships with our loved ones at home, uh, with um, with our um, all our our families, with all our church members, with our neighbours, with all dear Father that we come in contact with, we ask that you would help us to show the love of Jesus in our relationships. And so, dear Father, uh, we pray uh, these blessings. We pray for this help, and we ask, O oh Lord, that uh, we will overcome, um, and as days go by, that we will draw ever closer to you. Lord, we ask uh, that you would guide us all the way into the kingdom and help us to be able to recruit others uh, to follow Jesus, that they too may be saved, especially our own loved ones who have not accepted Jesus as yet. So we ask that you would hear our prayer, that you would answer it through the name of Jesus and to the glory of your great name too. We pray for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 And 
the reading for the Holy Spirit comes from Luke 11 verses 9 to 13. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given. It shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that seeketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Let us continue in prayer. Kind and loving Father, the creator of heavens and earth and the seas and the fountains of waters. Lord, we continue to give you thanks and praise for your weight of our praises. Lord, thank you for answering the prayers that has gone up before me. Lord, we continue to ask for your forgiveness, for there is nothing good into us and to us, dear Lord. I ask that as I am praying on behalf of my brothers and sisters, asking for the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, may you forgive all my sins, everything that I do knowingly and unknowingly. Lord, you have just tell us through your uh, through the reading on Luke chapter 11, dear Lord, that if we ask for the Holy Spirit, you not hold on and not giving us anything, dear Lord. You promise that the Holy Spirit will be our teacher. He will be our guide. Dear Lord, we pray that may your Holy Spirit be filled in each and every person here and the families represented so that our characters, dear Lord, may represent you. We pray that as we are living in our different communities, May we be true servant of you, dear Lord. Give us the spirit of forgiveness. Help us not to hold grudges, dear Lord. Sometimes we do forget and we, we hold on to grudges, dear Lord. We don't love one another as you do expect us to love each other, dear Lord. So we pray for the Holy Spirit to give us the love love for you and love for other people. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity that we can come to you and ask for the Holy Spirit, dear Lord. For on our own, we cannot do anything. So Lord, we ask that may you, may your Holy Spirit be with, with us throughout the day. Help us to know when to do things and when to be quiet, dear Lord. We pray that we, you should help us, Lord, to uh, be a light and a sword to, to the world, dear Lord. They should see a difference in us, dear Lord. And Lord, as your coming is very close, may you help us to let others know of your goodness. May your name be glorified now and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We continue to pray. Amen. I read uh, from Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. To our kind and loving Father who art in heaven, we continue to linger at the foot of your throne room. 
because this is where we get all that we need for this life and for the next life. Thank you for all the prayers that you have ascended and for hearing and accept and answering them. Oh Lord, I continue to bring, lift up this platform which you set up for a time such as this, where people are meet to a way iron a sharpens iron, and people from different places in different locations flung far across the, the world meet to um, learn of you, to encourage one another, to to worship you with one another, and to worship one another. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit who inspired to, to have this platform put together in the first place. And it is him who is maintaining it for, uh, for, for as many years it, as it has been in existence when it was only meant to be for a few, for, for a few days. And so I give you honor, praise, and glory, Lord, as I continue to ask for the Holy Spirit to uphold the programs that are that are run by this platform, the prayer the prayer meetings morning afternoon and evening, the book readings, the um, half night prayers, the other ministries that are attached to this platform, Lord, which are um, medical missionaries, which are uh, children's ministry. And they are book distributions separate, um, which are att attached to this platform. And I pray, Father, for all the speakers that are going to speak, uh, especially from this, from who is going to be speaking this week, but all the other speakers like Elder Mackenzie that come in uh, for the afternoon prayers and all the other programs that are running on this platform. Thank you for providing all that is needed for this work that you have commanded us to, to preach the gospel uh, to the so that all the ends of the world are, have received the gospel before which uh, the Lord will not come. And therefore, I give you honor, I praise you, for you are one who does not want to lose, not one of us. In spite of our rebellion, you have been uh, forbearing with us and patient with us. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to realize that in each one of us is, is, is you have given us gifts and is a, a gospel worker with the gifts that you have given us. We are able to attract uh, others to you in whatever capacity that that we can. And for us also to know that if we are not a preacher, that doesn't mean that we don't have any gift. We don't have any way. You, your word says that each one of us, you have given us a lot. And it is our responsibility to ask the Holy Spirit as the reading in Mark, in Mark, in Luke 11 is just indicated. Ask the Holy Spirit to help us to find that which you put us on this earth, that evangelist in whatever capacity it is, Father. Is it bringing people to our homes, uh, chatting to people on the street, book distribution, everything, Father. You are the one who said you will use stones and there is nothing and there is no one that you can choose. Help us to be grateful and remember that when Christ was here, he was a servant. He was of service. And if we want our characters to be changed into the same, to reflect his character perfectly before he gets here, for us to be able to, to get into the kingdom of heaven. And so we should be reflecting his character in every aspect, including that of service. Thank you for choosing a weaklings like all of us because we know that when you choose us, you have already given us the ability. Help us not to be afraid, but you promise that you haven't given us a mind of fear, 
but power and love and a sound mind. Help us to, in, to employ those, those, that sound mind in order to choose that which is right for the kingdom of heaven. I uplift the uh, prayer retreat that is coming shortly in December uh, in Kevinly. Now I ask Father for the Holy Spirit to go before everyone, before before everyone, and to go with those that are going to be traveling. There are some Lord that would like to go, but when they look at their resources, then they see it is impossible. You are the one who brought water out of the rock. You can also supply for those that have the will. That is what is written in your words. If we have the will, you will provide all that is needed. I pray for the speakers that are going to speak. And I pray for all the attendees and all the facilities, Lord. Send your angels to protect the place. And as the people are going to be making the way, those that need to make decisions, I ask for the Holy Spirit to be be uh, to be in the midst of all the plans that are going to go through. And as for the rest of the of the programs that are running, Father, thank you for the men and women who say, I will go, I will, when you ask, whom shall I send? Please let each one of us realize that you can we you can you uh, you can use us we must only display we must only uh, say that uh, know that we must only have the will this is my prayer father in the precious name of the son yeshua amen amen Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So it's a bit of a problem unmuting there. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for those prayers. And we'll um, uh, now um, uh, pray our prayer request, whether it will be um, um, to pray about the church, um, to pray for our families, for the sick and the bereaved or for um, any or for country living or anything else that the Holy Spirit leads, please feel free to unmute and um, I'll just stop the recording now. Uh, yes, we have a brother in our church who is seriously... One mentally... moment, one moment. I'm just stopping the recording. Bear with me, sorry. <laughs> 